on this episode of Still Loading, even the rocks do not recall. And it's the start of the summer of PlayStation 2. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new episode of Still Loading. My name is Josh Koval, the host of Still Loading, and this episode is kicking off the summer of PlayStation 2. So 20 years ago, the PlayStation 2 was released, and doesn't that make us all feel old? But before I go into explaining all that, let's see who we have here in the studio, for lack of a better term, today. So today, we have both of my brothers here, Michael and Matthew. Michael? Hello. Matthew. Howdy. So, Michael, you've been on the show numerous times. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I was just like, numerous? I, yeah, yeah, I guess. Like twice, right? No, more than that. Really? More? Definitely more. Than more. Oh, goodness um, gracious. Matthew, okay. this is your first yeah, time on the... Shitty. You yeah. always remember your first time. <laughs> 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 uh, but... Uh, <laughs> But no, so we're talking about the PlayStation 2. So I figured this is actually a perfect episode to jump off on, uh, not only because of the game we're talking about, but also because of having you guys on the show. Like, this is how we grew up. We start. Yeah. We all played the PS2 together. Pretty much. That's what really got us into gaming. Mm -hmm. And then kind of helped us bond, bond yeah, a lot, too, because yeah, we were definitely angry at each other. Oh, uh, okay. We weren't, like, compared we're, to what other brothers, we were so tame. We were, compared to other siblings in general, it's not, I don't we're very think tame. It was that we angry, though. I did annoy you guys a lot. Yeah, you did. That's okay, though. Yeah. And I now get that from Sam, so. I mean. We were also jerks, but, um. Who's Sam? But, uh, well, like, uh, Carly, my fiancé. Yes, our, our cousin. Oh. Carly, my fiance, for those of you who are, are unaware, which is all of you, um, <laughs> the story she's told me about her siblings are terrifying, and they were awful to each other. It's like, oh, oh, well, okay, we were just, you know... What was the most we did? Fun fight? <laughs> I don't know, we'd smack each other once or twice when we got annoyed. Yeah. And that's... That'd be it. That'd be it. And, uh... And when Josh would beat up on me, and then you would get annoying, so I would take it out on you, and then you would just kind of, you know... Take it. Take, fought back sometimes. <laughs> we none of us ever really fought back no, though. It no. was more like because we would hurt. Like yeah. if I hurt one of you guys, I'd yeah. immediately apologize and feel oh, yeah. so guilty about it. Also, not wanting to get in trouble. Oh, well, of course. Yeah, right. And I would try to like make you laugh. Like no, no, no. See, it's not bad. Ha ha ha. Funny <laughs> dance. Funny voice. Funny face. You're that, fine. That point. Did I? Did I laugh? Actually, yeah, you did. It worked I'm most times. Surprised. I didn't get in trouble. I'm not surprised. Um, so let's talk about the PlayStation 2 first. Yes. So the summer of the PS2, just to kind of explain all of this, like I said, it's the 20th anniversary. And I did an episode about a year-ish ago where I talked about what my favorite console of all time was. And I really wasn't sure. I did the episode literally as an exercise to figure out what is my favorite console. Because I like most consoles equally. Uh, but I know there is ones that I like more than others. And I wasn't sure which I was. And I ended up coming down to the PS2. And truthfully, it still is, but I, you know, I go through phases which ones I like more. But overall, yeah. it's the PS2. So I figured, especially the PS2 was the most important video game console of all time. Only for, uh, I shouldn't say the most important, but one of the, one of, yeah. and it's the highest yeah. selling. So it kind of deserves this month long extravaganza uh, that I'm doing for this. So yeah. what yeah. the summer of PS2 is is instead of doing my normal bi-weekly episodes every other week i am going to go weekly for this entire summer and a little bit into the fall and every week we, i'm going to talk about a different playstation 2 game and to start off the summer of playstation 2 and each each game will be different i'm trying not to include sequels i'm trying to pick one game per series um and it will all culminate in the final episode before the release of the of the North American release, excuse me, of the PlayStation 2. In fact, upon when this episode comes out, it would have already been out in Japan in March. It was actually released in Japan on March 4th, 2000, and it was released in North America in, on October 26th, 2000. So the final episode, which will be a full PS2 retrospective, will be 
the will be the sun will be Sunday, October twenty fifth. Mm-hmm. So this first game we're talking about is near and dear to all of our hearts, and that is Jack and Daxter: The Precursor Legacy. Great game. Great and game. the reason I chose this, and you're going to see the next episode is something is, is similar to this as well in the sense we've already done this. I've already mm-hmm. done an episode on the Jack and Daxter series. Right. The next episode, I guess, kind of spoiling it, but who really cares, is the first Ratchet and Clank game. Yes, yep. yes. And I already did a Ratchet and Clank <laughs> series. But one of the biggest series in the entirety of the PlayStation 2 is the mask are the mascot wars mm-hmm. Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank and Sly Cooper. Mm-hmm. So the first 3 episodes of the Summer of PS2 it's going to be dedicated to one of each of these games. The first the first uh entry into each of these series. So this week is Jack and Daxter the Precursor Legacy. Next week will be the original Ratchet and Clank and the third week of the Summer of PS2 will be Sly Cooper. And I never properly played that one. And Not I've always lie. been a little bummed about Not that. Sly Cooper is really good. Yeah, uh, Sly Cooper things. and the Phoebus Raccoonus, I think, is the official <laughs> title of the first one. Um, it is a it is a really good game. It holds up more than you think, but mm-hmm. we're not here to talk about yeah, we're so here to talk about Jack. So, Jack and Daxter, it was released on December 3rd, 2001. The director of the game is the founder, one of the co-founders of Naughty Dog, Jason Rubin, mm-hmm. and the lead designer is Evan Wells, who is the current president of Naughty Dog. Right, oh. right, yep. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, and I did a ton of research on this, and let's start from the very beginning. The first idea they had, the, the when they were coming up with a concept for Jack and Daxter after Crash Bandicoot, the uh, the Crash Team Racing had wrapped, the first idea they had was they wanted a seamless world, yeah, and a world yeah. that was looked so uh, sorry, a world that had no load time, so it was super immersive. And they wanted a day and night cycle, and bef- so before there was any Jack and Daxter, before there was any concept of a story or characters, they wanted that aesthetic mm-hmm. right there and then. Now my question to lead this off, lead off this conversation: Do you think they nailed it? Do you I, think they achieved that aesthetic? Oh well, yeah, De- definitely. I, I mean, mean, it's go from one area to the other. Unless you use the warp gate, you'll get there's no load time. Yeah. Even if even with the warp gate, the load times are not not super long. Yeah, I would say that's not even something you could debate. Like it, it's there. <laughs> it's there. They made a world that was seamless. So day and night. It's 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 the kind of thing. <laughs> It's a math problem, like, 2 plus 2 equals 4. There it is. Like, yes, you have a world, and you go through it without issue. Without there's load no time. load times, on, like you said, unless there's the warp gates. Yeah. Then there's also the, the day and night cycle. Yeah, everything they about their aesthetic, they nailed. Oh, and gosh, yeah. it's weird, because as a kid, I don't think I was cognizant of how incredibly advanced that was for the mm, time. Yeah. You didn't see that in video games back then. No. Yeah. Well, and I do remember us talking about um, because there were a, a a whole crap ton of promos for Jack and Daxter like on TV, um, at the time, and Which um, I remember none of because I was like four, right? Because you were very little, but I remember them talking about how how um, you know how like when you're a kid, um, you'll hear like some kind of bit of information, and then you latch onto that, just like oh, this is. A truth that I'm obsessed with now. Yes. Um, well, the one thing they talked about, about was how uh, Jack, just the character of Jack, had more detail in his design than an entire screen of Crash. Was that in the advertisements? Yeah, for the, yeah. Wow. And I, and I remember seeing that, and I was, well, I don't know, a seven, eight-year-old kid, nine-year-old kid, that blew my mind. It's like, that's so cool. Look at him. He's so well-designed. He's so intricate. You know, and in speaking of the design of, and yeah. speaking of the design yeah. of Jack, uh, we were just watching a let's play video with Jason Rubin and mm-hmm. Tim Schafer. Tim Schafer is not part of Naughty Dog, but he is famous for making a lot of LucasArts games, and uh, he now runs Double Fine Studios, right. yep. which is an indie game he, studio. I believe he's the founder of it. He is, yeah. Um, and the the design of Jack was a design by committee, which was kind of interesting. So Daxter was a singular vision. It was yeah. Yeah. it was an artist vision to create Daxter, both in terms of his character as you know what he did and how how he spoke and that kind of thing, but also in the visual design. Jack was more of a combination of multiple think groups. It, yeah. They they referenced specifically that his ears and face were very heavily influenced from jap from the like sony of japan yeah. and but japanese anime yeah 
And Jason Rubin kind of lamented that he, it was a detriment to Jack's character that it was such a design by committee because you lose that that very clear focus of a character. Mm-hmm, yeah. And it, he was clear he still likes Jack as a design, but overall he thinks it could have been better right. if it wasn't for the fact that they were getting pulled seven different ways between Sony of Europe, Sony of America, Sony of Japan, and then Naughty Dog's individual creative yeah. efforts well, yeah. leading and up I'm to sure it. And I'm sure they had like their original... Um, designer who like made the original concept for Jack yeah. and then things all got the, poured on yeah, top of that taken away came et cetera. Like, no yeah I changed this yeah I changed this this won't but, appeal to I don't know and one of the things that they were really trying to push with it was they wanted their version of Super Mario 64 so yeah, when I, I definitely noticed that when playing through it now mm-hmm. that I'm old it's definitely they would attempt at that 3D platforming style but they, when they were making Crash Bandicoot and they saw Super Mario 64, mm-hmm. and I quote, they were floored by what they saw on the screen, which I still am confused by the definition of the word floored, because sometimes I think it means the person's angry, and other times it's excited or, like, No, enthused. floored is just any kind of flabbergasted and disbelief. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, and, there we go. Actually. And I've used, I've usually seen it. In a positive light, it's like floored. Couldn't believe it. No, that's way. what I always thought too. But, but also, I, I've seen it where just like, and I was floored. I couldn't believe oh, what they had done to me. Yeah. You know, almost indignant about yeah. it. Okay, so. so yeah, they were just blown away by what they were doing with Super Mario sixty four. They couldn't believe what they had done. So what Jason Rubin even said was that in an interview I was uh, watching in preparation for this is that. Mario is kind of like a was like a toy box, and it each level kind of had it was a separate toy. They weren't yeah. really interconnected all that well. Yeah. It had the the castle hub yeah. world, and you jumped into, and you jumped into the paintings, but yeah. Yeah. you didn't really have but like each a painting big with its own like sandbox, thing. its own yeah, little toy right. box, which had its own like gimmicks and things to play with. So what they wanted to do was create their own version, but have it be a fully fledged world, which is where that whole aesthetic of uh, no load time, seamless world, day and night cycle all comes from. And mm-hmm. well, like we said, they achieved it. Yeah, well, yeah. and I had watched some of those interviews you're talking about, and um, they definitely made it seem like that they had spent with Crash, because Crash was like revolutionary and great, but they spent a lot of time with him trying to play catch up with Nintendo and with Mario, yeah. and then with Jack and Daxter, they finally like they caught up and got ahead. And they said they, their goal was to set the standard and for they they for did. platformers. Oh, 100 percent. Three D platformers were not the same after that. Like oh, it was, yeah. and I I can even see influences of Jack and Daxter and like Super Mario Odyssey, where mm-hmm. the it's much larger individual sandboxes for you to play with, but it's a, yeah. and it's a lot more seamless. Like you still have to travel on the Odyssey spaceship yeah, to go. Yeah, still the gimmick. Right, yeah, course, yeah. But, but um, I can see like a little bit of influence from that, and even maybe not like a direct influence, but like tangentially as Jack and Daxter's ripple effects. How it affected out. the the game the industry gaming, as a yeah. whole. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So. Let's talk about the story of the game. We kind of talked a little bit about the background, and there's other background stuff we're going to try to go into right. as we go through. Yeah. yeah. Um, and actually, uh, but actually, before we talk about the story, one other cool thing in the development of it, just because we were talking about Jack, that Jack was designed as a by committee type of thing, mm-hmm. uh, everyone in the company was allowed to, before the game had taken form, but, but when all they had was that aesthetic, yeah. they told everyone draw what you think the world should be Mm -hmm. everyone in the company had to or not had to was uh encouraged to draw what the idea like what you think the world we should make should be and that kind of set everything up so it allowed a very collaborative Mm -hmm. environment for the developers to to make their game and i think naughty dog still is very collaborative like that well and then because again i saw the same video that you're referencing and What's really neat is um, as they're talking about that, they they show different examples of what those things were, and and you can see how each one of those interpretations of, of what the world might be found its way into a design of a different location of Jack and Daxter. Because there was one that was all lava y looking, and that's very much similar like to the lava the canyon. tunnel. Or the yeah. La- yeah, 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 yeah. The fire fire canyon. Yeah, and lava tunnel. Lava tunnel. Yeah. That's what it is. Exactly. The wet stages. 
right. area. Right. And then there were ones that had like a bunch of funky looking pillars that wound up being that wound up becoming the precursor artifacts. Um, but these funky looking pillars with leaves and whatnot and trees and that became the uh, forbidden jungle. You know? Um, and and so all those different um all those different uh interpretations still found their way. They didn't just pick one. It's like, ah, yes, this is our world now. You know, they but they made... found a way to blend it where it felt yeah. natural. It didn't exactly. feel forced. Yeah. Exactly. It's not like, yeah, everything felt like it kind of flowed together. Like the Forbidden Forest wasn't next to a volcano. It was next to the starting area where it kind of felt like Well, it and it could, I mean, theoretically, you it. could still have it, but it, yeah. it's not like the Forbidden Forest was next to an icy mountain. Yeah, yeah. This right. is a be- It would be a better yeah. example. Because uh, I've seen games that do that, and yeah. they try their best to kind of blend the assets together, but it always feels very disjointed. It's, it's like you're playing Minecraft. Because oh, then, just, yes, that happens, and you have right. a different you you walk you into go, a different biome. You from a desert. Son of a bitch. And the it, police are after me. Well, God dang it. Well, because well, then what? On, on the other end of the uh, Fire Canyon, um, is that where the Blue Sage? Yeah. Is? Yes, that is the yeah. Blue Sage, and well, it's see, all water. And 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 it's all water, and it's rainy and misty, and see, and it makes sense because like, oh, it's separated by a mountain range. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So of course the weather would be different. You know, one side of the mountain would have a different weather. Than the other. Uh, so let's 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 use that to talk about sages to kind of dive into the story let's though of the it. game. So the overall story concept is. Jack and his buddy Daxter are playing on an island on Shadow Island, Shadow Mist, Misty, Misty Island, Misty Island. Misty Island. There you go. Uh, Misty Island. Uh, on playing on Misty Island when they're not supposed to. Uh, uh, a little act of disobedience, as as Samus, as old Samus calls it. Samus say. the Green Sage, who he's the guy who, as you heard in the beginning, go even the rocks do not, not recall. recall. It's such a to, weird delivery. I love it. But I have to say, like, how the rocks, how the rocks forget, like. Was it just that long ago that so much has I happened? I think so. I think you're reading a little too much into yeah. it. <laughs> but, like, I think the answer is yes. Yeah, yeah. probably. We'll go with that. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so, you, so they go to Misty Island, and they get attacked by um, one of the... I don't, he's not a lurker. What is that thing called? I have no Oh, no, he no is idea. a is lurker. Is it a bone lurker? Yeah, it's um, it's it's like a different breed we'll of lurker. Bone lurker for, for, yeah, the, for the burker. A burker. A blurker. Um, so... He tries to attack Jack, and they find a precursor artifact, and then he throws it at him, and mm-hmm. it blows up, which knocks Daxter into this vat of dark eco. And you'll we'll explain what eco is in a quick yeah. second, but when he gets shot back out, he's no longer yeah. a humanoid figure, because yeah. they're not humans, they're humanoids. Well, they kind of like, uh, like elves. They have yeah, they have animals. these really long, pointy ears. Uh, but he's this thing called an Otzel. Yes. And it basically looks like a weasel combined with a ferret type yeah, well, of thing. Well, are, they the, oh, are is, weasels and ferrets the same thing? Aren't no. They? No, they're in the same family. But no, um, Otz, the name Otzel comes from otter and weasel. Well, there Otzel. we go. I but, didn't uh, know that. Yeah. Cool. What is that, Dockles? So I don't seem friendly. <laughs> He has like a Brooklyn accent, doesn't he? Oh, kind yeah. of like a tinge of it. Oh, check. Where, where did they come from? Why did they build this crap? I think, does he say crud or crap? Crap. I thought he said Why crud. did they build this crap? Uh, but yeah, so he gets knocked into it, turns into an otzel, and then they talk, They go back to the sage of their village, the green sage, mm-hmm. Samos the sage, and he tells them, well, I know nothing about Dark Eco, but you know who might? The Dark Eco Sage who lives north, far, far to the far north. To the north. <laughs> uh, sorry, we might we played this a lot as kids. We well, have to have played it like 20 well, times at probably. least. Probably. And this one here, Matt, he played the the beginning of it just this morning. So yeah. I just heard all this like yeah, an yeah, hour sure. ago. Uh, so, they, so then you have to travel across the world to get to the darks to get to Gaul and Maya yes. the dark sage Gaul and, Akron, the sage. Yeah. and spoiler alert you find out he's the villain all along gasp who oh would have thought God. uh it was cool because in actually in the same behind the scenes thing that we were watching or the let's play with Tim Schafer we were watching Jason Rubin also lamented that they didn't have a strong villain for the original yeah. Jack Daxter yeah. which I agree Gaul and Maya aren't really strong villains yeah. I thought really Maya have... was bizarrely suggestive for a kid's game. She's very chesty. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so <laughs> I mean, are all, all the women. All the girls, all the women in that one. You're right, yeah. Particularly, you know, Kira and then Maya. Well, Kira's not chesty. She's well, just not. Very... She, she's curvy. But, um, yeah. but it's, it is weird. Yeah, but I also didn't feel that 
I didn't feel the absence of a good villain, you yeah. know, in that game. That is true. I think I, all the other it, stuff goes to the occasion enough where I didn't feel the absence. Yeah, of no, it. it's it's just that Gaul is Golemai isn't a great no, villain. They're, they're, they're just they're they're serviceable. They're, they get the job done. They're literally they so you have someone to fight. I, I think that's why, like, when you get to Jack Two, uh, Baron Prax- Baron Praxis, Baron Prax- Prax- yeah. Praxis is a much better villain because yes. he's so he seems so unattainable to reach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and also and he, he has legitimate reasons for what he's doing. I was gonna say he's a complex villain. I'm gonna d- diverge for a second, yeah. but um, he's a complex villain, and he's really he's really interesting. And I think that's probably something yeah. that they kind of picked up from their shortcomings or mistakes, if you will, in Jack and Daxter. It's like, okay, we did this. Let's do it better this way. You know? yeah. And then we got Errol. Errol. Errol, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that's Jack 2 yes. and 3 and so on. But uh, So they have to go north. And as they tra- travel through the different parts of the world, they find the other sages. Uh, they find the blue sage. I forget. You actually do meet the sages, right? No, you don't. That's, I don't you remember meet, that. You meet them at the end. Meet that's yeah, what yeah. it was. That's you what meet I thought. All of them, yeah. Because they're all, all they're all captured. Yeah. That's all why captured. the port. So exactly. Same as the sage uh, is f- complaining that none of the other sages seem fit to turn their portal on their end yeah. of the portal on or whatever. However, that exact phrase goes yeah. that he says. <laughs> they never seem fit to turn their ends on for quite a while. That's what it is, and you find out why at the end is because Gollum Maya kidnapped them all. Yeah, and like I do wonder if they've been like kidnapped for like this long period of time or if they just haven't turned their ends on for a while and then they got kidnapped you know i don't yeah. know but who no who's to say it's not made clear but so but, you uh, go the through result, each result the same. you go through each zone where the sages should live uh, so the first section after the, your area is the blue sages area and you mm-hmm. can there's each the way the game is kind of laid out is that each zone has a hub village, and then there's individual levels, for lack of a better term, yeah. that you go into. And it's funny how they do they they do very clever like loading time things. If you notice, like every uh, every time you go to a new one of those areas, there's either a long tunnel or a long or, or a long or an elevator. Yeah. So that's how they kind of mask their loading times pretty efficiently as well. Yeah. yeah. Um. Some of the things they also went into in the documentary was how bizarrely how bizarre they programmed the game. They talked about how they would yeah. bounce workloads off of different processors in the PS2 and sometimes even use the PS1 processor mm-hmm. that was built in for backwards compatibility, but they weren't really supposed to use it. Yep. And when Mass Media Productions, the company that did the HG remakes for the PS3, went went and took a look under the hood, they were just they, it's kind of funny. I made a, I took a note of it. When you're watching that documentary, you see the anger behind their eyes over how frustrated they were, yeah. and not necessarily <laughs> anger at Naughty Dog. I mean, maybe a little bit because they're Just the ones that made it. Frustration, but yeah. f- pure frustration, and they're trying so hard to be gracious about it. But you can just tell they're just they're just annoyed As, by how difficult it was yeah. to to make it for them. Well, you can tell they were annoyed, it. but yeah. also very impressed as well. Because yeah, because um, the one of them said um, a naughty dog try to get the most out of the PS2, and I would argue that they definitely did. Yep, you know they. They squeezed it for all it was worth. Um, no, you're, uh, and I, and they do consistently with every console. Yeah, every yeah. console they push the barrier. Even with the their last PS3 game, Last of Us, mm-hmm. that game still looks good. That game yeah. looks like if it wasn't for its, um, I would say the anti-aliasing because the PS3 kind of had bad like anti-aliasing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it would look like a PS4 game. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they have they it's clear that they still continuously oh, yeah. they still continue to do that. And the story overall for the game, we pretty much went over it. I mean, yeah, there's yeah, not there's not a lot to it. Simple. Now, what I do want to talk about real quick before we dive into the our favorite levels, our favorite zones, uh our favorite areas that we play in. Uh I did a little research from uh beforehand like I said and one of the things I found really interesting was the animation for this. Mm. The they actually hired professional animators. Were with Crash Bandicoot, the animators kind of had to learn on the job. Yeah, and they the animator specifically for Jack and Daxter, his name was John Kim, 
And he Mm -hmm. added a lot of character into it. So when Jack would walk through water, he wouldn't just run through it like nothing happened. He would start waddling. He would lift up his feet. feet. Daxter, while walking, while standing on Jack's shoulder, would start shivering because now he's cold from the water. Yeah. Well, and I was watching that that same uh, documentary, and as they're playing through it, you would hear them say, "Ah, that's a John Kim touch." Yeah. Uh. And John Kim. He was so like looking, watching that documentary. You can see how much effort he put into the animations of the characters. He added a lot of small details, and the the idea was that Jack should move differently in every single possible scenario that they could think of, or that they were able to do. Yeah, and and overall for everything, exactly. And they did, they did good with that. Trying to remember all the all the reactions, trying to remember all the reactions he had, but. Well, the the um the one of the or well, the inspiration just in thinking of reactions, the the inspiration for Daxter's animation was from Abu from Aladdin. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. and it makes sense because yeah. of the way it was, the way Daxter's animated, he's kind of that annoying little pest, and Abu kind of is that mm-hmm. sidekick character. Yeah. Well, and how he's constantly crawling around Jack and constantly on shoulder, staying on his person in some kind of wacky way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With their original design for how Daxter was going to interact with Jack, other than just being on his shoulder, was since Jack was designed to be a mute at first because they wanted mm-hmm. the player to be able to project themselves onto the character. Which I've never agreed with, but that's yeah. just I, I can understand in a sense, but it it doesn't always work. You're right. Yeah. Well, and because for me, I've always just been a big fan of great stories and great characters. Mm-hmm. And to have the protagonist be silent always took me out of that yeah a little bit just they've i felt they had no personality because like yeah i'm supposed to project my personality onto them but you do you do that anyway regardless of the character but um you're too busy playing the game to really feel like that that's you because it's not yeah it's it's not you know it's different when the game is more customizable i was playing stardew valley before you guys came over and that game makes sense why you would project yourself onto right. it because you You're literally customize the their look, you customize their face, their yeah. clothes, male mm. or female, oh. you customize who you date in the game. And in a game like that, you are are cultivating a life. You are are managing a life there. It's not like it's like yes, there is technically, you know, a, a an ending to it per se, but you can keep going. It's more so this is a world that you're creating for yourself and living mm. in as opposed to a story you are playing through. And yeah. for that, it's a little harder to project yourself onto. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A hundred percent. When, when you try to have, it's the same problem that Zelda, the Zelda conquers it pretty well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's difficult to have a strong narrative when you have a mute, when you have a blank protagonist. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so they made Jack mute for that reason. And Daxter, they made the sidekick just to be as zany as possible, as zany mm-hmm. as he possibly could be. And because he could say all the random shit that he wanted to, they had an idea of, like, the player could just kick Daxter to get him to shut up. <laughs> That'd be hilarious if they kept that in the game. I know, right? I, I kind of wish they would have, but you know right. we would be kicking him all the time. <laughs> oh, all the time. We wouldn't play the game. we just kick Daxter all over well, the place. Well, it'd still be fun, but it would be kind of... But you don't want to have to kick him because he's annoying. You want to kick yeah. him because maybe his reaction is funny, right. which is a weird thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, let's talk about our favorite zone, Zen. The game has a lot of different places you can explore, just yeah. in the first hub area, which is Sand over village yep. uh you have the forbidden jungle you have the beach which i forget sentinel beach sentinel beach then uh, you misty also island. have misty island uh and there's the tutorial guy actually let's yeah well out of those three zones not including and maybe sandoval village is your favorite but out of those three including sandoval village so four i guess sandover four, sandover sorry yeah yep. Inst- Sandoval is a county in a different state in yeah. <laughs> in, in Arizona, I think. Probably. Um, no, I. I, I they're, they're, Off topic. It's from work. I am. Are you googling looking? locations in Jack and Daxter right now? And uh, I don't know why it's giving me Jack two locations. I want Jack and Daxter locations. Between Sandover, Forbidden Jungle, Sentinel Beach, and Misty Island, in that specific zone, which is your favorite? Hmm. All right, I'd, so Sandover. I'd have to go with Forbidden Jungle, personally. Yeah, I think Forbidden so. Jungle. Then next would be Misty Island, but... Oh, here we well, go. Well, why, why is it your favorite, though? I was going to get to that. Uh, just... Let's 
trying to think. I, I'm trying to put it into words. Just one, Forbidden has has that little boss you fight. So that the the plant, yeah, the plant boss. Mm-hmm. Uh, the things you kind of have to do just seem. I don't, I don't know a bit more, like they take. It feels like you're actually doing something. With Sentinel Beach, you ca- you literally just find power cells lying around in two places. Yeah. With it, there's, yeah, there's that in the Forbidden Forest, but you have to risk swimming out to get it. Mm-hmm. It's not a big risk. It's, but it, well, the the one that's out there, you're talking about the one that's yeah. hidden in the ca- in the cove, in the right? Cove and you so have to swim. that one, I would almost argue, is a bigger risk than you would think because up until that point, every bit in the water is swarming with sharks Dude, or or the, so lurker shark. yeah, the lurker even sharks. Even now, yeah, even now. The, like, oh god, the, that sound effect. That yeah. Oh, oh. I hate it. I love it. And I yeah. hate it. I hate, love but it hate that it. one, yeah. that one, I remember playing it for the first time was a huge risk yeah, because like, everything yeah. you have learned up to that point was the water's dangerous. Don't go in the water. It's there's if if you're just stuck there. Start swimming. Start swimming away from. Start swimming out. Exactly. Yeah. But it. So I remember just the first time I played that specific zone. I actually think I'm with you. Forbidden Jungle, I think, is my favorite yeah. in of, that those little, couple, of those yeah. of those but three. I actually have the list as well. We'll go F2, through it. Yeah, that's two. Um. So, Michael, is is Forbidden Jungle yours as well? Or? I mean, of the ones you've listed, yes. Yeah, we're just going. We're going. We're going hub area in by groups. hub area. So yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. the the so, area outside of Sandover. Sandover Village, right. that's my favorite All one. Yeah. At the start of the game, yeah. I would say that's my favorite too. Um, only because it's it's just the most interesting. The jungle of, of, of that group is, is the most interesting. It's the prettiest, I think. Yeah. And and I don't know, it's it's cool to look at because like, yeah, the other most interesting one would be Misty Island. But that's actually my least favorite. Yeah, well see yeah. and and that's what I was about to say. It's one of the most interesting looking, but it's my least favorite just because I don't enjoy looking at it. Yeah. I don't like Misty Island because of the muse. You have to catch the oh, artist uh, muse. muse. Pardon my that's French. Actually- Fuck the muse. <laughs> Fuck the muse. That's <laughs> actually not that bad now that I'm older, but when I started, that was the worst oh, level. Oh, God. But that little golden asshole. <laughs> Out of context. Uh, <laughs> Phrasing. Uh, no, so it's funny, though, because there is an element of that, but not nearly as annoying in the Forbidden Forest, too, the Fisherman's Task. Yeah. And Ooh. I was playing that tonight, and I, I don't know if it's because of the HG port where you, there's a little bit more input delay than there was on the PS2, mm-hmm. but that is obnoxiously difficult it is really hard i actually i actually found it really easy yeah but well when you now, were a kid you when did I'm a, when i was a kid that was that was the hardest thing ever yeah i remember you got josh you got really good at it i i thought i was too and then when i played it this morning in preparation for this i lost i couldn't get past well, also, it for like five or ten years since you played it i know but i don't think my my reflexes should have gotten that shitty no, <laughs> no, no. Well. but you never know well, and, and the funny thing is, I played it this morning, and I only, and I only barely missed eleven, I only missed eleven pounds of cats. I it took thing. me about five or six attempts, and when I finally got got it on the sixth attempt, I think I was about yeah. that too, like yeah. eleven pounds that I missed. And then after you get, it, you walk by, you hear like, yeah, <laughs> that laugh, just laughing the for whole all game, eternity. the whole game. He's just laughing it up. I was like telling, I was telling uh, Courtney about thing. that. My wife, for yeah. those who don't know, actually, she's going to be on an episode at some point. Cool. I don't know, not for the summer necessarily, but another episode. But anyway, um, she was on one before, but it was a game she never played before, and so. Uh-huh. She wasn't really. She didn't do good at it, but I. I think I didn't. I didn't. I didn't give her any favors for that yeah. one. So we're gonna pick a game that we both played. Um, but uh, I was telling her about it when after I uh, finished the fisherman's challenge, and he started laughing, and I looked at her, and I went, "He's gonna do that." for the rest of the game. Anytime you come back to this zone, he's still going to be standing there laughing his ass off like a moron. <laughs> you you go all the way to Gollum and my my which is like which is the last area and then just teleport back to one, one of the warp games. Go to the forbidden forest. He's still going to be there laughing. Well, see, and then I just see that. I picture him laughing like that for all eternity, unable to stop, <laughs> on the inside, crying his eyes out. Good Lord, I just yeah. want to breathe. And then, Please. And then, he's, and then he's finally happy when the metalheads show up. 
then oh, he dies. And and they finally too. get a sweet release of death. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and it's um, like, oh my god! All right, we're moving on. <laughs> That's <laughs> different. So it, to <clears throat> traverse from that first hub area to the second, you go yep. through Fire Canyon. Now there's yeah. two different. There's three different areas like this. There's Fire Canyon, like the traversal thing. Yeah. The, right. the, Fire Canyon, the pass. like the tube, like the 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 trail that leads from one hub area to another hub right. area like you said fire canyon mountain pass and then uh, lava, lava tube, tube. Mm-hmm. so out of those three which one did you like the most i don't mind already mm. I, I can say it if you guys want to get a chance to think kind of like the lava tube kind, kind of like my mountain, <gasps> mountain God, i'm pa- trying to remember mountain you pass s- which an, a mountain pass i hate because of those stupid locals oh it's annoying locals. That go, nah, 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 shut up! <laughs> I think my favorite, I was going to say Mountain Pass, but then when you mentioned Lava Tube, I actually think it's Lava Tube because it's like a roller coaster. Yeah, yeah actually. It's fun. It's, it's fun to do. It's it, difficult, but it's fun. Yeah. It's, dude, it's the fun kind of difficult. Not not the Mountain Pass, which is just like, just die, you stupid locals. If my fiance lets me, I think I might play this when we get home. Yeah. You mean if she lets you? No, you I, just do it. I'm just kidding. By, I'm just by that I mean do if, it. No. If, she if you has, don't have any other plans, if yeah. she doesn't have any other plans for us. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what did you, do you guys all agree with me, or do you have? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I'm uh, with you. Lava tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> so let's move on to the second area. You have Rock Village is the hub village. Yeah, yeah. I actually think that's my favorite village out of all Rock of village. the villages. I like yeah. Sandover Village a lot, but I like Rock Village more because it's kind of got like this cool. A big main meeting house, almost yeah. for lack yeah, of a term. Yeah. It's a big, it's a big, big old pavilion hut. type yeah, of hut yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because yeah, and Which lots of interest. You have the you have the depressed soldier. The, the, you have oh, a lot of the, the, like that the sad guy soldier who's like yeah, who's just I, crying. He's crying because he got his butt kicked. To be fair, to be fair, <laughs> that guy, to be fair, the guy he fought was huge. huge. Yeah, huge. Um. So the the areas around it, you have the Lost Precursor City, yeah. you have Which the Boggy so cool. Swamp, yeah. you have and you have the Precursor Basin. Yeah. Right, so right. my favorite is actually the Lost Precursor City. Same. But the Precursor yeah. Basin, I love the idea it's that so they neat. they switched it up instead of being on foot like the rest yeah. of the game. Uh, on you the, you you're on the speeder bike. Speed. You're on the, the zoomer. The, the zoomer, which is the same Big thing that you zoomer. use to yes, which is the same thing that you use to take from the mountain uh, for for all the other things for mountain pass for fire canyon, fire canyon for yeah, uh, lava tube. tube. Yep. Yep. So it's always kind. Of, it was kind of cool that they had a zone that wasn't just a st- typical platformer where Jack would run and jump through it yeah. and do mm-hmm. his spin te- spin spin kicks, spin kicks and punch like thrust punches. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that basin. Don't we see that in Jack Two? We I want to say we do. Uh, we see something kind of like, or it. at least the forest is similar to it. That I that part hate those in, areas in Jack Two. Yeah, I love them visually. Fan. I hate them for the gameplay. That's fair. Enough. Um. So yeah, yeah. So what about you? So mine was a Lost Precursor City. But what about you guys? I was just gonna say honestly, the Lost Precursor City. I I loved its design. I thought it was really fun to play through. Like, it was challenging, but not in the infuriating kind of way. Um, yeah, I, f- I loved that one. Yeah. What so about much. you, Matt? Yeah, yeah. For me, it's actually a tie between that and the and Boggy Swamp. I actually kind of oh, like Boggy Swamp. I like Boggy Swamp in parts. Yeah. I really like the platforming where it kind of goes on the classic 2d style like this yeah. 2d style yeah and then it's got the spinning the spinning uh like rods that he jack will jump onto and do yeah. like spins around very gymnastic style spins and you launch yourself from from pole place to pole to type yeah. of thing and i really enjoy that but then i hate the segments where the swamp rats come out and you have to yeah. keep they have a, a hive yeah. type of thing in, a, in like a tree and you have to keep killing them over and over and over again just to fight your way up to it and it's not that it's necessarily difficult it's just not fun it's no. tedious more than it is fun yeah, I I see that. I still I still kind of like the. It's still a tie, for, even with that. It's still a tie for me between that. 
I'm like, and, and I get that. Between that and what else, sorry? Uh, I rem- the, you, you said it. I just, the city, the sunken city. The sunken city. Yeah. I'm with you, Mike. I think the sunken city has a very cool art aesthetic. Like, it's visually, very... Visually, mm-hmm. I will say the sunken city definitely looks better. Yeah. But remember uh, Boggy Billy, the guy yeah. from the Boggy Swamp? The, <laughs> I didn't know that was his name. The, That's well, his name? Apparently, the, uh, according Billy. to the wiki. Uh, what I like tube? I uh, yeah, yeah what's a what's a, I forgot he said asshole. that. Listen, everything that don't sink into the seal swamp is mine. <laughs> it's, not, it's not how he says it, but uh, uh, I mean that's pretty close. You got a pretty you got it down. Pretty no, I mean, good. Uh, his, his, exact, swamp his exact mad. words. God, this his guy. accent. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, all the characters in this world, we haven't even really talked about the ancillary characters. Yeah, uh, Jack's it, uncle, Jack which is uh, never st- explained. Never stod- explained. He stodgy British man. He's, yeah, he's like a guy who who went off to fight to fight short in like on the old precursor orbs. It he, sounds like he's a guy who went off to fight in like the Crimean War or yeah, something right. like that. I, I was thinking more like what, fight, what? fight in Africa. Or like, yeah, yeah, right. He's Boer Africa. War. Or, yeah. yeah, he's he's, he's one of those. India. He's one of those hunters. Yeah, uh, he's such a weird dude. What's that? The fairly odd parents, but it's like, ah, oh, yes, we British love that. It reminds us of the hunt. <laughs> <laughs> that show yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah. It really was. Um, but yeah, then you have one the, of those guys. Then no. you have the greedy mayor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ma- he's a who, douche. Who, yeah, who like I didn't notice it when the kids looked at now. It's like this guy's awful. Yeah, he's, he's a terrible awful. mayor. He's trying to rig the election so he stays a mayor of like five huts. But still, five more power cells that would yeah, be great. great. That oh, would be oh, a large contribution. Thank you. Asshole. He's such a he's so skeevy. God, he's yeah. what? I mean, at least he's only the worst he's gonna do is be in charge of five huts. Right. <laughs> right, it's such a. I love how he's so hell bent on becoming the mayor again I, I, when his town is so well. tiny. It's you know, so any, little. I, I know they probably didn't. They didn't have so kids little. Well just for they were like save based on time. It wasn't yeah, because yeah. they didn't want to have. Right, but still. Well, <laughs> it's still a, a, something yeah. to notice. Um, so then in the, then the next area where we were just at, where we were talking about our favorite zones, you have the soldier who's depressed as hell. Yeah, you have um. Oh my god, you have the... the... You have that one, like... I don't want to say... He's almost like a con artist, but doesn't... Isn't really a con artist. Right. The guy, the guy in the bail. Like, who who made a bet yes. loss. That's what like, it was. Oh, the gambler. Yeah. The gambler, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm stuck in this bail. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now I'm stuck in this barrel. Yeah, it's this guy with the glasses yeah. and the hat. Uh, he does look like a con man, though, because he he's stuck in his barrel. He's he stuck in a barrel, but at the same time, he doesn't he look like. like, a con- he, like when you're talking, like, oh, he's not a con- kind of con man, but he, he never you never do anything that involves conning people. Oh god, we'll see. Here, here we go. And the the thing has a quote from him in in, in relation to the depressed uh, war. It's like, oh no, not another hero. I lost my shorts on this so-called hero's big fight against and so on and so forth yeah so he oh, yeah, bet he, on the hero he bet to feed on the them. hero w- winning yeah he's yeah. just he's a gambler so uh we go on to the th- the third area which is after you go through the mountain pass you have the volcanic crater which yeah. isn't necessarily a town but it's where the fire mm-hmm. sage lives he has right. his hut it's, in this precarious hut, yeah i will actually say well i like Rock Village more aesthetically. I like the concepts they have in the volcanic crater because Same, yeah. to get to your different zones, you have to ride mine carts to get over there, but you have to platform on top of these moving mine carts. So it's a little yeah. challenging, yeah. but not too much. It's neat though. They're it's slow neat. moving. Yeah. Um. But the areas in there, which you make, have. Yeah. Well, sorry. Which, go on. Yeah. Which makes getting on them easy, but waiting for to get there. Would- uh, uh, the levels in this area, or the 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 loca- the areas in this uh, hub world hub zone, is Snowy Mountain, Spider Cave, and actually that's that's it. That's it. Snowy yeah. Mountain and Spider Cave. I actually like. Oh, that's actually a tough one. I think they're both really good. They're both really good. Uh, Spider Cave scared me a lot as a kid. Same, man. <laughs> because there's that yeah. one, there's that cave within the cave where there's hundreds of little spiders that show up out of nowhere, and you have to run through without like, yeah, uh, hatching all their eggs. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's yeah. terrifying. Yeah, and, that, and now I know to go to Snowy Mountain first so you can get the pow, so you can get the yellow. 
uh, vein to activate. Oh it. yeah, yeah. Right, right. And there, there was no cool stuff. Covered. So we didn't even talk about fucking eco. Yeah, 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 yeah man. Okay. So Same area than eco, maybe. Yeah. So well, let's 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 describe the eco now because we're yeah. pretty much at the end of the area. Yeah, for anyway. the most part. Um, yeah. it's a tie between Spider Cave and Snow and Melt. I think so good. for me. Yeah. Uh, but there's so the, for me. the world of Jack and Daxter it revolves around eco. So eco is basically just earth energy for lack of a better term and it's the yeah. different elements you have yeah. the life energy of the, the planet yeah, yeah. I, I think is how Samos described it so the green eco is health yeah, blue eco is life. electricity or the motion, mo- motion as yeah. he calls it uh the f- red eco is fire or destruction yeah um yeah. then uh yellow eco is power i think yeah. is yeah. what it is power projection something like that out. you shoot it yeah. out like fire just gives you stronger melee Longer. attacks but the yellow I also found out if you do it's you can destroy those dark eco boxes with a if with, you if you're powered up with red eco and you attack you can destroy them without, oh. without actually taking damage. Oh, out. good to know. Good to know that 15 20, years later. Yeah, right. More yeah. Later, Almost yeah. 20 years yeah, later. Yeah. 19 yeah. years later yeah, on the goodness. release of this. Well, 18. Uh, oh my, yeah, 18 and a half or whatever if you're but, being uh, technical. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, pretty much 20 years at this point. Yeah, pretty much. So you have those four different ecos, and then you have Dark Eco, which, is, which they don't mention... They, they they talk about it in the beginning, but you only really have those four ecos that you interact with because yeah. dark eco hurts you. Yeah, and yeah. they then unless and, you're Daxter, you you're turn Daxter, into you're somehow somehow Daxter's the little only person we know of that touches dark eco and doesn't die right away. And you find out later that spoiler for Jack two and three for those who have not played that this is a big spoiler, so keep in uh, keep keep that in, mind. Keep that in yeah. mind. But Daxter and Otzel is actually. In the image of a precursor. Mm-hmm. That's what the precursors Which look like. Which I thought was a fun twist. <laughs> I did too, yeah, actually. When, that, when, you first hear that, when you first find that out and you don't know, you're just like, Oh, what? blew my mind. <laughs> uh, and funny and then, you know, this isn't a spoiler, but in Jack 2 and 3, you I think in 3 you don't see Light Eco until the third one, right? You don't correct, really correct, light, you know? yeah. But you know, there, which is weird. You know it exists because it was in the fourth one. Was Light Eco in the first one? Oh, yeah, that's how you beat the boss. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Light Eco. It does exist. That's what it was, yeah. yeah. They combined the green, blue, red, and yellow Eco, and that combined into White Eco. And for some reason, that and that allowed you to one-stop the robot somehow. It doesn't make sense either, because when you combine colors, it's never going to make white. It's only going to make black. Yeah, it's going to make black. I think it's just the fact that what? it was no, no. all the ecos that were no, no, dark. No, actually, it would make white. White on the light spectrum is all the colors hitting your eyes at once. Black is the is none of the colors hitting your eyes. Well, I'm talking about yeah. when you combine colors. Like if you t- if you were to but take, take a, but like a in, marker in and you art, yeah, it get dark or now, it get white. Or. Now, all that being said, I think their justification is just that it's all the ecos that weren't dark eco combining yeah, to combining. one will make the ultimate. You know, anti dark eco. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And one of the cool things about this game that I thought, like, it, it is a collectathon in a sense. You you have to collect precursor orbs, right. you have to collect yeah. power cells. Um, those are pretty much. Oh, and scout yeah. flies, which scout gives fly. you power yeah. cells. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but we won't go into what a scout fly is. So, it's precursor cool. orbs are just orbs that were left by the precursors, and yeah. they're just scattered all throughout the world. And they're used for money. They're, they're used, used for money, money pretty like much. Gold, how gold and silver was used back yes. in ancient times. And uh, today, kind of power good. cells are a lot more rare, and you use power cells. Basically, they're. It, in the story of the game, they are also left by precursors, and they're used to power different things. Yeah. Uh, used to power vehicles, to power machinery, that kind of stuff. Right. And the purpose of gameplay is gatekeeping. It's meant to keep yeah. the player t- at a certain location yeah. until they've mastered that location enough, or the previous locations enough, yeah. to progress to the next area. Right. Um, and th- what I was going to say, what I think is cool, is that it actually gives you some incentive to collect everything because yeah. you get a hidden ending if you collect all the precursor orbs and all the power cells. Which I thought was so hard when I was a kid. Like, how am I supposed to do this? Oh, wait, I think you only need all the pre- all the power cells. Do you need all the precursor orbs too for the secret ending? Or do you just you need do. all the power cells? I think, I think you just need all the power cells. That's what it is. Because you yeah. need the 100 power cells in order to, to fill, fill the gate. The door, yeah. To fill yeah. the gate or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it, but, you can still col- but it's still fun to collect all the precursor orbs. I love precursors. Uh, yeah. that's but, the final thing he said before yeah. he, and 
But if you didn't see that ending, though, when Jack 2 hit, you'd be confused as shit. So confused, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But, and with ending Jack 2, it's like spoiler. I'm not going to get into it too much, but how'd they get the thing they used to go back in time back to into the cell that they got it from? What? Cause, no, no, because... <laughs> How did they transport it, do you mean? No, no, from no, no, there no. To... because... Well, this is off tangent, but... That's fine. Yeah, yeah, but... It's Jack and Daxter. Remember, yeah, remember how, in, in the end, Samos remarked that the time traveler, the machine that, that the young Samos from Jack 2 uses to go into the past is the same one that is used to come to back to the future. Wait, so is Samos... Did the Samos in the Jack 1, does he know that he's actually time traveled at that point yeah yeah i th- by, I, I believe so by the timeline he would know he had yeah. time travel oh yes because oh. um but but without all the answers because I, I remember when all the metal heads flooded in at, at the top of act two he says so this is how it happened yeah oh. but that, but that's, that's what i think but that got me confused the time trap machine was stored in the in that area so he went through all the effort of getting going to the past somehow getting it in there and then you have to get a hundred power cells to open it. How do you get it open? The fourth time. Well, it's it's the it's this it's a time loop. It's it's a paradox type of thing. Like it's it's the same thing in like the Terminator movies where the term. So in the term, have you guys seen the Terminator movies? I know the parts. I know, so I know the, base, the the well, first off, disappointment. Big fucking disappointed yeah, in both know. of you. I should Come see on. it. Uh, but Along with Predator. the Predators, good, not as good. But anyway, uh, so the pre- so in Terminator One, the whole premise is that you know this Terminator comes back in time to kill uh, Sarah Connor because she is the one that leads the revolution that tries to fight the machines, and she's been very mm-hmm. successful at it. In fact, they're about to defeat the machines, which is why they send this. Uh, Terminator, Terminator back, back in time back. to erase her from ever existing so that way they, no one would ever come to create the resistance um, in response the resistance sends back this guy named Kyle Reese mm-hmm. to go and protect her from the Terminator because he knows how he not necessarily knows exactly how to kill it but he knows what he's up against compared right. to the citizens of yeah. the you 80s know. right um and the reason, well, the reason they're even killing Sarah Connor is because her son John Connor is is the resistance leader, and he learned everything from her right. type of thing. Uh, so John sends Kyle back to protect his mother. Mm-hmm. Plot twist is that the guy that uh, John Connor sends back, Kyle Reese, is his dad actually. So he sleeps with oh, his mother shit. when he goes back in time. She gets pregnant with John. Right, right. John grows now. up knowing who Kyle Reese is before all this happens mm-hmm, yeah. and has to purposely send him back every time because he knows John that Kyle Reese is his father. Right. How like, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So it's this weird. Was a headache. Yeah, time tra- when you introduce time travel into narratives, it makes it infinitely more uh, complex because yeah. as soon as you change something technically if it it just creates branching yeah. paths in time that you have to eventually somehow reconnect. Yeah, so then I, I like the Dragon Ball Z and uh this is also kind of the post the Avengers take it's just like the timelines branch off. They're there. You, you you just you at certain points you have to just kind of accept the fact that when you introduce time travel, if you want to do it well, you have to not make any mention of the other timelines yeah, and just kind of let just, the suspension of disbelief mm, go with yeah. that point. But um, yeah. back back to back to the what yes, we more to about. our original point though. What you said before, you're right. If you hadn't um, opened up that door, then the beginning of Jack Two would be a them mi- just hurling a, through space a and time. To you. Yeah. But I think what they do do uh, what they did do a, a good job of. Doo-doo. Doo-doo. <laughs> like, like, yeah, the game ended, but, like, also, it made it clear that, like, hey, I still haven't opened this thing. Yeah, and... And it made it clear that, like, something will happen if you do. So yeah. most people, I assume, like us, wanted to find out what that was. So, and it was damn it, all... they got their power cells. Before we get on the tangent, I remember it being like, oh, my God, I have to get all the power... I have to get all the power cells? Yeah, That's right? so hard. And then I... And then I played it, like, what... Like fairly recently it's been like a few months now since i fully played 
through the first one. Did you play the PS4 copy that I got? Yeah, the PS4 copy. So you actually played through the whole thing? Yeah. Did it play well thing. on the PS4? Yeah, it actually did. Played really I well. wasn't sure. So I got a copy of it from Limited Run Games. Yeah. Uh, not a sponsor, but would love them to be but a check sponsor. Them out. <laughs> check them out anyway. But you know what? Uh, uh, hit me up. I'll, 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 I'll shout you out some more, uh, more often. But go on. So yeah, you played yeah. on the PS4. Yeah, anyways. And it's like, oh my god, this is so easy to get, get all the power cells. It was... Really it, I think as an adult, you're able to strategize which ones yeah. to get in which order to make it not near. Like when I yeah. was playing here, I just got all the power cells in the Forbidden Jungle, yeah. and I'm 20 precursor orbs shy, and I don't know where they're at. I don't yeah. feel like. And I've but also hindsight is got, very got, helpful. Yeah, yeah. When you know where every, still remember where a lot of things are. Yeah, it definitely it de- helps. It yeah. definitely helps a lot. I think, well, like when I, I, I'd also played a bit before this. I got. Every I am just like get di- guys are walk done, you get that done right away. Well normally. But I got all of Forbidden Forest with the power cells and precursor orbs and sentinel beats. All okay. The, on the hour before I can't. It doesn't those. take yeah, once you know no. what you're doing. I will say, I guess uh, we can start wrapping this up because we've kind of we've talked about the story, we've talked yeah. about the gameplay, we've talked about the world building, mm-hmm. we've talked about a lot of behind the scenes stuff, which yeah, was really yeah. cool. Uh, I guess what I want to do to kind of lead into our our final topic with this is legacy and our personal connection to it. So to for me to chop off, start off, I mean, obviously, I legacy I think is actually kind of a silly question because it left a huge legacy. It people yeah. still clamor for a Jack and Daxter sequel. I want a Jack twenty four. years later. Yeah, I still want a Jack four. And it's even uh, even if with three, even though three did did a good job at wrapping up the series, in my opinion. I still want a four. Yeah, I want to see where where it goes. There's still there's still places it can go. Mm-hmm. Um, I think so. Legacy it's it's cemented in in video game yeah. history. It's definitely. just a very it's one of the best platformers of all time. Yeah, definitely definitely put it up there, the best of all time. But for my personal connection to it, uh, it it was a game where it captured my imagination as a kid cuz i i have vivid memories of going into the forbidden jungle and being absolutely terrified of the mm-hmm. the, the first enemy that pops in there the snake that drops down yeah. and it's from the trees and it scared me so much as a kid and just the whole world felt so real it felt like yeah. a real uh, a real experience and i just i it's hard for games to give me that experience again where I actually get nervous walking in, where it makes me nervous. Like, and the same thing we were talking about before with the power cell hidden in the cove and we were nervous to go swimming because of the lurker shark. Like, yeah. There's very well, few games that give me that sense of wonderment anymore. Yeah. And this game really, it, it yeah. hits a sweet spot for me because it's right in that... It was right in that age range where I was old enough to remember more about the games than than previous, but I was also right. still young enough where my suspension of disbelief, I was able to get completely immersed yeah. into this game. Yeah. Well, and that's what I was going to say. Like The things that stick with me most are the ones that gave me a sense of wonder as a kid. And that's what like I... Like, just thinking forward, when I have kids someday, like I, I hope there are going to be TV shows, games... Um, materials like um media of stories to give them that also give them that sense of wonder so things like like jack and daxter um i mean hell even power rangers like i mean much younger but like gave me a sense of wonder like oh what's this world and all these you know Mm -hmm. what about you matt picking it back off what you said mainly what you said with like Back when I was younger, a lot of, a lot of, what I played through was like, oh my god, this is terrifying. I remember going to the underwater city was terrifying when I was a child mm-hmm. because they had to hop over docks. And I was like, I don't want to fall into the water or get numb by the local shark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was terrifying. Uh, and now it's just like up, up, but dude, up, but up. I really want to play this now when we get home. Yeah. I really want to play it. You should. But oh, man. for me personally, though, it. It was the first real game I got into. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I played games before though, but this was the ge- this was what got me into playing video games. Yeah, the way the a lot like I do today. It was- Even like Crash Bandicoot gave me that sense of wonder too. That 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 
Yeah, no, like I remember we would I take uh, construction paper and 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 tape it and fold it into the shape of those crystals. That oh, was. Did we do that? I, I did. Don't, I, don't, I don't remember. Doing, I, I you, you were, were not also, old enough. You yeah. were like you would have been like three or four on <laughs> that. Yeah. But yeah, that yeah, I think that I think that's kind of its legacy and it's our personal impact for this series yeah. for yeah. not just this game specifically this game. Jack and two, Jack two and three are also very good. Well, and I, they, they, they like, you like Jack two and three. I think holds up for their story. Yeah. I think Jack one has a more interesting world yes yeah. in term visually 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 like if you were to ask me what game was my favorite i would say jack 2 if jack 2 definitely if i'm being honest i adore that game but the just in terms of the world and the creativity yeah 100 yeah. jack and daxter the, the world of jack of the first jack and daxter feels more alive a hundred percent. Yeah, and I I like Jack two and three, but Jack two because they added guns to it, it made controls a lot more frustrating. It and did, also it the did. world was very bleak. I'm not talking. I don't mind the post apocalyptic, like depressing city, mm -hmm. but the city's huge, and you see a lot of it for a long time. So yeah, it gets I get visually that. gets depressing versus yeah. emotionally. But anyway, so I think that's a good stopping point. Yeah, then. I think that covers. A lot of stuff that we would want to say about Jack and Daxter. Um, I apologize to the audience. I fucked up a little bit with the audio at this at first with some of the levels. So some of us might be a little bit quieter or a little too loud. Uh, so just kind of thank you for bearing with it up until this point. Just turn the volume up on your computer. It'll solve all your problems. Well, no, because then I'm too loud and you're too soft. <laughs> I uh, 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 so Just, yeah. Uh, back and forth. It was uh. It was. Back and forth, back thank and you guys forth. for joining me for this episode. Yeah. Uh, this was a lot of oh, fun. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that kicks off the summer of PS2. This is going to be a good summer. There's a lot of games coming up that I'm excited to have uh to release and to share with all of you. It's going to be a good time. Uh, do you guys have anything you want to plug? Any social media or anything like that? First off. Find a PlayStation 2 somewhere. If you don't have one, go and play it. Yeah. Appreciate that system. Or PS3 with the HD remake. Or PS3 with the HD remake. Or if remake. you want to pay out the ass for the for the limited run games version on the PS4, Oof. once limited run games is done with their run, you can't buy it again. You have yeah. to get it through secondhand sellers mm -hmm. like eBay, which is going to yeah. be more expensive. Yep. Although, I particularly meant to just appreciate the PS2 as a system, if you oh, can yeah. play it, 100%. by all means. Oh, yeah. But in terms of things to plug... Well, if anyone feels so inclined, um, I am an actor, and I post about all my various actory and life things, mostly on Instagram. So, Michael underscore A, as in the letter A, underscore Koval, C-O-V-E-L. That's my Instagram if you want to follow me, by all means. I um, I post very, very wholesome content. <laughs> And and I mainly do artwork and story and story writing, mainly fan fiction. <laughs> well, and and well, do you have but do you have any places yes. that, that people can find your work at? Yeah, uh, you can go to DeviantArt, uh, DeviantArt dot com slash Zman X V. Z Man Z M A N X V. Z M A N X V. Yeah. I thought of it when I was ten and have kept it since. <laughs> yep, makes much. sense. Uh, I have a subscribe star. I don't remember the URL, but the link with all. All my other links are on my DeviantArt page. All so right. Me, so find my stuff from there. And as usual, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at StillLoadingPod on all of them. You can also contact me at StillLoadingContact at gmail.com if you want to email me. Also, check out my website, StillLoadingPodcast.com. Uh, if you want to support the show and you want to continue to help it grow or you would like to see it continue to grow, you can also support me by uh, donating to the Patreon. It, even just a dollar a month helps me grow the show. That is patreon.com slash stillloadingpod. And check out all the members of the Podbeard Network, No Geeks Allowed, The Hotter Show, the network I'm a part of, uh, podbeardnetwork.com. And that should do it. That is the first episode of the Summer of PS2. So, guys, thank you once again for joining me. Thanks thank you. And I will see you all next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.